All right, recording. So hi you guys. So welcome to my channel. I'm back with a new video and we're gonna check out the Larry Bird. This video is called the best Larry Bird revenge story ever told. I'm excited. I'm not gonna rabble. Let's get straight in. Charles Barkley oh. had a handwritten letter delivered to Bill Lambeer before playing a game against him. And it said, Dear Bill, oh. fuck you. Sincerely, <laughs> Charles Barkley. I didn't see that. And as one might expect, they got into a fist fight that game. <laughs> and now Barkley gets into it and he is Lambeer. And now there are some punches Sheesh. thrown. And when Robert Parrish, who got into a fight with Lambeer three years in a row, was questioned about Bill Lambeer, he said, I was always taught if you can't say something nice about someone, then don't say anything at all. So I'm saying nothing at all. But nobody hated Bill Lambeer more than Larry Bird. I you never uh, really ever liked Lambeer in any social situation. No. Yeah. And uh, it's because he was a dirty player. The 80s when I played, there were a lot of cheap shots. If you go back and watch the Pistons playing against Chicago, I mean, oh Michael my and Scotty were yeah, getting yeah. pounded. And a lot of it happened after the whistle. Mm -hmm. Like you're going in and you get oh, fouled. Oh, I don't like him either. To, that's a free foul. Oh, I don't like him either. He'd hit you and all that, but he'd hit you, you know, you know you're going to get hit. Yeah. But he didn't try to maim you. Right. Bill tried to hurt you. Got it back mm. for the reset of the five. Lambeer walked with it, then mm. committed a foul. Knocked Bird to the I floor. Are I very respect that he don't respect it. it. Yeah, caught Bird in the jaw. Yeah. And Larry's a little upset. And, uh, you know, he was one of them guys, you shoot a jumper, he tries to slide his foot underneath your ankle so you twist your ankle on. That's why Some contact is part of the game, but this guy seemed to be just too much, just all around dirty. A Did he really used to do that? If you watch any of our old games, it's somewhere part, you know, like when you get at it a little bit here and there. The like, so one time I shot a jumper and Larry did it to me, and I stepped on his foot, but I stepped on a hide and twist my ankle. I don't know, a quarter or two later, he was shooting that jumper. I slid mine on there. That's the last time he ever did it. Really? Yeah. And when Bill Lambeer was called the NBA's Dirtiest player by Michael Jordan. Lambeer and Jordan. Yes, indeed. There are punches thrown. He responded in a way that really showed his true colors. Michael Jordan may be a very good, outstanding basketball player, but as a individual, down-to-earth, heart person, he he has only who is he? Who cares about him? He, all he does is play basketball. In the, in the world, he's this big. <laughs> yeah, I can see why nobody liked him. And during the 1986 season, when the All-Star team had just been announced, Bird asked a group of reporters if Lambeer, who had been an All-Star the last three years with the Pistons, had made the team again. And when he heard Lambeer was not selected, Larry Bird said, Good. Now I won't have to worry about him getting on the bus and saying, Hi, Larry. And me having to say, F*** you, Bill. But that year, they would still see each other in the playoffs. I was always the one that came out first. There's always a leprechaun out on the floor. I'd go out and spit right on the leprechaun, rub my foot in it, and then go down and make a big dunk. Away we went. The He's tension an was obviously high. And in one game, naturally Robert nice. Parrish said, I feel like Lambeer took some cheap shots at me. I guarantee something will break out if they let it go next time. And though nothing happened the rest of that series, the very next year, they met again in the Eastern Conference get him, Finals. Get him, get him. And in game four, it got crazy. And open people, see Sting. Larry. Oh. What was that? Some American football take that. Hey. Larry Bird and Bill Lane Beer. Couldn't even follow. It was two. From the game. Now it is Bird throwing the ball at Lambeer and Rodman coming over. Larry Bird said, Lambeer was backing away from me, didn't want any part of me. I wish they would have cleared the court for about 15 minutes and just let us go at each other. And Bill Lambeer, in classic Bill Lambeer fashion, he said, I didn't do a thing. I tried to grab hold of him to break his fall, and Larry came up swinging. Nah, both hands, nah. I hate people that, I even, just admit it. I hate people that do the crime and then they're the victim. Oh, just admit it at least. Have some kind of self. And Larry Bird responded, sure, he wasn't trying to hurt me. And I was trying to throw the ball at the referee. 
Bill's face just got in the way. When you play the same team four, five, six, seven times right in a row within the space of about two weeks, it's got to be bad tempo. Our ball club, I always feel, we're retaliators, not instigators. And I think the other team, like Detroit, they are the instigators. And in that next game, when Bill Lambeer tried to come out and shake Larry Bird's hand, Larry looked at Bill and said, Oh, f yourself. There you go. I always have respect for my opponents, Larry said. But in my instance, I think Lambeer was trying to hurt me. So in game five, the Celtics got their revenge. There you go, I got goosebumps. The and the crowd just had so much hatred for Lambeer for that game. I've never felt, I've never been in any sort of a sporting event where the crowd hated a player that much. And I he still did it to himself. this day that the crowd convinced Parrish he to punch him in the second quarter. Oh, no question. Very gingerly tried to shoot that shot. Nice play by Darren Day. It doesn't fall. The tip by Parrish. He can't get it to fall. And Parrish takes Lambeer to the ground with a right forearm. Well, they had said it was only a matter of time till somebody did this. Lambeer, he had it coming. That's, I, you know, yeah. <laughs> He had it coming. Because you, you watched the replay and it was like barely he did anything. <laughs> it could have happened him. two plays before. The camera just the got smile. the where Robert got mad, see? But nobody saw Lambeer's elbow that hit him in the neck right by the Adam's apple. And all he did was react because people are sick and tired of this guy with the baby face putting his mm. hands up all the time. Who, me? Meanwhile, he'll, he'll suck a punch you. He'll do everything in the game. So as I said once before, it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Yeah, I was kind of looking over my shoulder, Max. I thought I don't get sucker punched, to be honest. <laughs> you know, in the heat of the battle, you know, we we had changed a few uh, unpleasant trees, then a few elbows that passed between us, and then I just lost a third punch. So I couldn't believe I, I lost my composure like that. That was the first time ever. It's okay. This it's play okay. He epitomized 80s basketball because not only did this flurry of punches result in no ejections and no technicals, but they didn't even call a foul. They just kept playing. Larry Bird called it a good deed. But sometimes, in the words of the great Frank Sinatra, the best revenge is massive success because later on that game, Larry Bird made the greatest play of his entire career. Mm, I got goosebumps in my we legs. We had to win that game. Both teams knew that whoever won game five was probably going to win the series. Casey had to play the starters almost the whole game. And so our guys were just completely worn out. There's Bird off the screen from the corner. That was with basket this. by Larry Bird. That's a two-pointer. Detroit by three with a minute 13. And Bird. The Celtics had been to the finals in 84, 85, 86, and now it's 87. We're all beat up. The guys that are playing are hurt. Um, so, you know, it was just guts. It was just a guts and pride. 341 to go in the game. Detroit leading by two. And that man is playing on nothing but heart. Mm. He went out with an ankle injury that would keep most people out of the game. Came back in, and now he's twisted it again. Now, the Boston moment, that was a heartbreaking moment. What was heartbreaking about that moment is I had made the game-winning shot. Everybody wants to beat the Pistons. Right now, Boston is first in line in that desire. They lead by one, 27, 27 seconds. But I was on Isaiah Thomas, and he went one-on-one -on -one against me at the top of the floor. I thought I played pretty good defense, and Isaiah didn't get in the pain, and he took a jump shot, a contested jump shot, and uh, it went in. I was like, Isaiah, he been around that long, but it's obviously someone else. The top of the against Seaston. 16 seconds. Seaston right in his face. Thomas with a very big He bucket. said that's we go it. To the we know Bird's going to get he it. He wanted it to end there. Of the right He's like, side. Yeah, I got the winning shot. And we got the play figured out. We sent him left. About five of us come over there to try to block the shot. Uh huh. He'll take it to the hoop. He can bend. All the way? All the way? And Seasting hit it off of a Detroit player. No, no. Ball goes out of bounds, and I never forget everything just started. It went in slow motion. So I run over. We we look at the bench. No timeout. Nothing. 
So I run over and I grab the ball. Uh -huh. Detroit should have called the timeout, Brian, because they had a timeout left. They could advance the ball down to the other end of the floor. There's a shot somewhere. There's a photo that I saw that Chuck Daly is standing by their bench with his with his hands up, calling timeout. Isaiah, I remember to this day, he's standing there like this to the referee. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. So I grabbed the ball he thought it wasn't from the referee, Lambeer's good foul shooter. I never had taken the ball out. I, that wasn't my thing, right? I, I, I throw it up. Bird sneaks in. Bird! Oh, I my didn't God! Even see him. Bird was moving right when he was inbounding the pass. And when you look at it For from a couple life. different film angles, I mean, he, he threw it right to him on the move. And I had my back to where he was stealing the ball. So when I turned around, I was probably more shocked than anybody in the whole stadium that Bird had the ball in his hands. And this is probably one of the most incredible plays oh that's ever happened against me and that probably I've ever witnessed from an athletic standpoint. Two people being in sync and just Bird just playing every second. And that's what the Celtics taught us, to play every second, not to play 47 and a half minutes, mm -hmm. but so to play a full 48. Let me see how and he had a smirk on it. He knew the game was over, and he, had, he almost had a smile on his face when they gave him the ball, and he did not see Bird at all. But the thing I remember the most is that joker. This is the out-of-bounds line. <laughs> that joker caught the ball, and in my mind, I'm like, okay, he going out of bounds. That dude did this, like a ballerina, right? And if you go back and you watch the play, that dude is on his toes. The, the, the baseline is right up under his toes. And in my mind, he must have stood there for about five seconds because every, <laughs> everything was going in slow motion in my mind, right? And, then, and it's like, damn, how you doing that? <laughs> <laughs> and then DJ, out of nowhere, right? right? They are so in tune. They are so in sync. He catches the, you know, Bird hits him, he catches the basketball, lay it up. I'm walking to the huddle, and as I come back out of the huddle, right, we try to take the ball out of bounds or whatever, Larry walks by and he goes, <laughs> wow. We can't be right. I'm like, oh. oh. The Celtics nah. won that series in seven games. And when Bill Lambeer tried to shake Larry Bird's mm -mm. hand again, mm -mm. Larry just ignored it mm -mm. and walked straight through it. Larry Bird this said, your time. I don't like Bill Lambeer. Why should I shake his hand? Even Isaiah Thomas, who was Bill Lambeer's teammate for 11 years on the Bad Boy Pistons, had this to say about him. To tell you the truth, if I didn't know Bill, I wouldn't like him either. Ooh, I got and chills. When the Celtics retired Larry Bird's jersey in 1993, that hatred was still there. Thank you. This seems like a perfect night. I mean, except for the fact that Bill Lambeer couldn't be here. <laughs> what would you tell him if he was? We would probably hang him up with my, <laughs> my number. <laughs> because back in the day, the animosity was not for show. When they hated each other, they really hated each other. And it didn't stop when they retired. They were enemies for life. I hate Larry Bird, but I respect the hell out of that man. I respect Isaiah Thomas's talent. No matter how much I hate him, yeah, I respect his game. But Bill Lambeer's hate was on another level because he didn't respect anybody not even his own teammates. In his last Detroit Pistons practice before he retired, Lambeer elbowed the star player Isaiah Thomas and broke his rib. And when Isaiah Thomas got angry, Lambeer elbowed him again. Bill Lambeer once said, I don't fight, I agitate, then walk away. Worst but kind. this time, Isaiah Thomas didn't let him walk away because in retaliation, Isaiah Thomas punched Bill Lambeer in the head, breaking his own hand, resulting in Isaiah being sidelined for eight weeks. Like I said, I can see why nobody liked him. 
I don't give an inch at all on the, on the court. I don't give anybody any respect. Uh, I think that's the major problem with a lot of other players is I don't respect their game. If they happen to get in the way, well, that's not my fault. That's their fault. They're not in the way you target them. I make no apologies for my game uh, throughout my career. Whatever the general public thinks about my style of play, I really could care less. I don't care less about your style of play. You are just a bad person. You left the bad boat on the court for the most part, but not with Lambeer. I you never uh, really ever liked Lambeer in any social situation. No. Yeah. And uh, it's because he was a dirty player. Larry Bird sitting next to you right now. Would you talk to him? Would you have a conversation play, with him? What would you say? I probably go to a different table. See, I respect that. People that have no accountability or just he don't seem to. I don't know. I never heard of I probably heard of him, but like I just mm. Is it playing or what is this? Uh what is this? We're gonna end the video right here, you guys. This was interesting though. Share your opinion down below. Um yeah, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and hopefully I'll see you in another video.